Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a beautiful system of equations. We have x plus y squared equals z cubed, x squared plus y cubed equals z to the fourth power, and x cubed plus y to the fourth equals z to the fifth power. And we're going to be solving for x, y, and z. Where does this problem come from? This problem comes from... Московские математические регаты. And it's a beautiful problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We have x plus y squared equals z cubed, x squared plus y cubed equals z to the fourth, and x cubed plus y to the fourth equals z to the fifth. So I'll look at this problem uh, case by case, uh, starting with the most trivial case, and then we'll check every case out. First case is basically when everything is equal to zero. Because notice that if x, y, z are all zero, then this system is satisfied. We call this a trivial solution because there's really nothing interesting about it. And not all equations, obviously not all equations will satisfy this, but it's worth checking. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second case. The second case is going to limit some variables. So we'll st we're still using x equals zero, but this time we want y to be non-zero. Okay, and we're going to see what happens to z. And of course, if x and z are both 0, then y automatically becomes 0, right? Okay, you can check it out. But if uh, x is 0, then we get the following. y squared equals z cubed. y cubed equals z to the fourth. And y to the fourth equals z to the fifth. We get three equations. So I want you to notice two things here. First of all, z cubed is equal to y squared which is greater than zero. Remember, y does not equal zero, so y squared is always going to be positive. And this basically implies that z is positive, because z cubed is positive. And then if you look at it uh, and from another perspective, y cubed is equal to z to the fourth, and z to the fourth is also greater than zero. Remember, if x and, zero are, if x and z are zero at the same time, then something weird happens. So we want z to be, uh, in this case, non-zero. And this means that y cubed is positive or y is positive. Great, so y and z both have to be positive. And under this condition, we can actually go ahead and write y. Since y is positive, we can write it as square root of z cubed from here. And then looking at the other equations, we can also write it as cube root of z to the fourth and the fourth root of z to the fifth. Looking at these equations, considering the fact that y and z are both positive, from here we get that y and z are both equal to 1. And since x is 0, this pretty much give, gives us an ordered triple. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the third case, because this is, was the second. And the third case is going to be, basically we're going to switch these around. y equals 0, and then x does not equal 0. In which case, we're going to get something pretty interesting, because notice that, if y is 0, then we can immediately write, okay, x is equal to z cubed, x squared is equal to z to the fourth, and x cubed is equal to z to the fifth. Now, notice that we can go ahead and substitute x here. For example, we can replace this x with that. That's going to give us z to the sixth equals z to the fourth, and z to the ninth equals z to the fifth, if we do it with this number as well. Okay, from here we kind of get two equations. By factoring, we can take out the z to the fourth, z squared minus one equals zero. Here we can take out z to the fifth, and then we get z to the fourth minus one equals zero. These equations are pretty much the same because they tell us that, okay, z can be zero, one, or negative one. The problem is, z, can z be zero? That's a good question, right? Well, the thing is, z cannot be zero because that would imply x equals zero. So z is not zero. Therefore, z is either 1 or negative 1. If z is 1, then x is 1. And if z is negative 1, then x is also negative 1. So they're equal, basically. All right? Let's go ahead and take a look at number 4, case number 4. Case number 4, as you may guess, z equals 0 and y does not equal 0. Right? In, in this case, we're going to be getting something like this. x plus y squared is equal to 0. x squared plus y cubed is equal to 0. And x cubed plus y to the fourth is equal to 0. Now the first one gives us x equals negative y squared. And from here we can immediately see that x is less than 0. Why? 
because y is not zero, y squared is positive, negative y squared is always negative. Make sense? And then from the second equation by way of factoring, but first of all, let's replace uh, y with negative x squared, right? Or x with negative y squared, that's probably a better idea. Uh, you're going to be getting something like y to the fourth plus y to the third equals zero. And this can be factored. We can take out a y cubed and write it as y cubed times y plus one equals zero. From here, we're going to get y equals zero or y equals negative one. But y can't be zero, remember that? So y needs to be negative one, okay? That's going to be the conclusion from there. If you look at the other equation, you're pretty much going to get the same thing. You also need to remember y cubed can be written as negative x squared from the second equation, which indicates that since negative x squared is negative, y is also negative. Make sense? And of course, when y is negative 1, x is also going to be negative 1. And remember, in this case, z is equal to 0. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at case number 5. Case number 5 is where all the variables are different from zero, right? X is not zero, Y is not zero, Z is not zero. This is the most interesting case in my opinion. And here's what we're gonna do. Let me rewrite the system one more time. I have these equations and then I have this one. And then I have X to the third plus Y to the fourth equals Z to the fifth. Okay, now here's what I want you to observe before I start doing something. If you take the second equation and square it, you're going to get z to the eighth on the right hand side. If you multiply the first and the third equation, you're going to get z to the power eight on the right hand side. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and multiply the first equation and the third equation, which is going to give us z to the power eight. And then of course, that's going to equal the square of the second equation, which is also z to the power eight. Awesome. But when we expand, it's going to be awesomer. Let's go ahead and expand, distribute everything. We're going to get x to the fourth plus xy to the fourth plus x cubed y squared plus y to the sixth. On the right hand side, we get x to the fourth plus 2x squared y cubed plus y to the sixth. Notice that x to the fourth cancels out, y to the sixth cancels out. Let's put everything on the same side and try to factor this. xy to the fourth plus x cubed y squared minus 2x squared y cubed is equal to 0. Now we can take out xy squared as a common factor. That is going to give us y squared plus x squared minus 2xy, which is perfect because that's a perfect square. So from here we get the following. x is 0, y is 0, but remember we don't want those cases, right? Uh, based on our assumption, this can only be 0, and that is y minus x quantity squared equals 0, which implies that y is equal to x. Great. What is that supposed to mean? Let's find out. Remember, x and y are both different from 0, but they're equal in this case. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first equation. x plus y squared is equal to z cubed. If y and x are equal, replace y with x, you're going to get x plus x squared is equal to z cubed. Great. Let's go ahead and do this in the second equation x squared plus y cubed is equal to z to the fourth, replace y with x, you're going to get x plus x cubed is equal to z to the fourth. Now go ahead and take these two equations, we can factor out x from the first one, 1 plus x equals z cubed, and let me write this one on top because we're going to divide, and I'm supposed to get x squared out, 1 plus x inside equals z to the fourth power. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide these equations, that's going to give me something super nice because 1 plus x is going to cancel out. One of the x's will cancel out and three of the z's will cancel out. Leaving us with x equals z, but we already know y equals x, which means x, y, z are all equal. Beautiful. Then we can kind of plug this in to the very first equation. Remember, when they're all equal, and it doesn't matter which one you use, by the way, but let's go ahead and replace everything with x. x plus x squared equals x cubed. Let's put everything on the right-hand side and then try to factor and solve this equation because this is going to give us all the solutions. x times x squared minus x minus 1. Uh-oh, uh, uh golden ratio, right? And from here, obviously, x does not equal 0. We know that. So we're going to look at the other equation, which is quadratic. And if you write the solutions to that equation, you're going to get 1 plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2, which is the y value, which is also the z value. So the third case, which is the most interesting case, basically gives us the following solutions. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.